In today's episode of the Pathman Presents podcast, I got a very interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Patrick Weaver, and he's heading over from the folks over at Juicebox. And um, yeah, we want to really deep dive into Juice Analytics, actually, I should say. Um, we should uh, deep dive into what Juice Analytics is all about and how they, you know, help people to present like pros with custom graphics, interactive data, and so on. So basically, it's an all-in-one platform to create reports, dashboards, sales pitches, and more. So if you, you know, haven't heard about it, you can hop over to juiceanalytics.com. And today, we're going to be deep diving with Patrick into what they're all about. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I appreciate it. Um, and I'm excited to get to talk about Juice Analytics with you for a little while. Very cool. So Patrick, give people an overview. What is it all about uh, what you guys are doing at Juice Analytics uh, in a sort of like a 360 overview? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Patrick Weaver. I am the public relations and marketing manager here at Juice Analytics. Um, so Juice has been around for almost 20 years. We were actually founded by two brothers uh, who saw a disconnect in the way that people were presenting data. Uh, we've had a lot of different formats and iterations of what Juice Analytics really has done. Um, lots of different business models throughout the years, but uh, basically what we have done is twofold. We're an organization that seeks to change the way that data is presented and increasing data fluency in the United States and around the world. Uh, but we're also the creators behind the data storytelling solution, Juicebox. Um, we describe Juicebox really as like Canva, but for data, uh, which is a really interesting uh, uh, sort of angle on what we're doing. Um, and so we have, uh, we're headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee, but we have offices across the US. We're all fully remote now, thanks to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have about 25 employees that are across the Midwest and the Southeastern United States. So we launched our, our self-service platform, Juicebox, uh, going into 2020. Uh, it was our goal to have it out by the end of the year. And then things sort of took a turn as it did for everyone in 2020 with the pandemic. And so uh, it actually turned out to be even better for us because there was more of a need for people to be able to present data in a new way as they're doing it from home. So uh, that's that's what we've been doing. That's kind of our company's mission. And uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to continue talking to you about Juicebox. Very cool. So maybe tell us a little bit about the, the typical clients, like what types of organizations and which types of use cases would you know be a great fit for Juice Analytics or in Juicebox, yeah. for that matter? Yeah, either or. They're, they're really interchangeable. So uh, uh, we... Uh, we're in a multitude of different industries, um, but we've really seen an exceptional boom and, and really high success in what we call the insights industry. So these are going to be your business analysts. They're going to be uh, your market researchers. Um, that really is like our bread and butter. Um, but we also service clients in higher education and healthcare. Those are two really great fits for us. But the great thing about Juicebox is, is that it is really versatile in terms of you being able to build it, build out something within the solution that is going to benefit you. Um, you mentioned at the top of the show, marketing dashboards, sales, uh, data-driven sales pitches, um, customer reporting is a huge one. I used to work in customer success and I always say, I wish that I had had a tool like Juicebox. It would have saved me so much time. Um, and so uh, really the types of people that uh, we are servicing, um, we don't like to think about a specific kind of company or a specific kind of industry. Because as an organization, we believe in like a people first view of data and a people first view of analytics. So we really take that same people first approach uh, in our marketing and our sales efforts. So when we're looking at who those like ideal champions are, we sort of, I at least think about things in like three different buckets. So mindset, uh, roles, and then target rich companies. And so when I say mindsets, these are people with a certain type of mindset. So they're going to be someone that is probably really savvy in Excel. Uh, they're going to be somebody who is a consultant or maybe even like a subject matter expert um, that's created or acquired some data that they need to present, but they're not going to be super confident in presenting their data and in those abilities. But these people also have a very specific viewpoint or mindset that their final output of their work is a reflection upon their self. And so that's really important. Most of those people land in certain roles. Like I mentioned before, it's going to be people that are in operations, uh, client deliverables, marketing and sales. There was the people that are responsible for gathering data, 
analysis, research, uh, but only those with the purpose of then generating some type of impactful report to deliver somewhere else. Um, and our, our target rich companies, like I mentioned, are really people in the insights industry. So that's going to be market research, industry analyst, informationist, um, consulting where you're delivering client solutions. Um, and so that's really like the bread and butter when it comes to uh, the people that are using us. But we also do have one-off cases. I always like to make it a point to uh, draw attention to our CEO's daughter. She is uh, 12 years old and she uses Juicebox for her school projects. And if you're curious on how a 12 year old's using it on her YouTube channel, we literally have a Lila G show in which she and her dad will record videos about what she's using Juicebox for in her classrooms in middle school. Um, and so that's one of the, the great things about it is that there are just so many different use cases. But when we're looking at, you know, our bread and butter, it, it does fall within that insights industry mostly. Very cool. Now, um, tell us a little bit about sort of the the individuals, like how they find you guys. Like, what would be a typical journey of somebody, you know, getting to know you guys and then getting started? Like, maybe what are the client acquisition channels that you guys are leveraging? Yeah. So uh, we have been around for quite a while, for almost two decades, and so there is some name recognition uh, that goes along with it. We have an amazing roster of clients and of of customers who are oftentimes presenting data out to the public or to other organizations. Um, and so they get to see Juicebox and they may be like, I've never seen this tool before. And, and those customers and those clients really are champions for us in that regard. So word of mouth is really great for us. Um, but one of the things that I was sort of tasked with, I was hired in 2019. There hadn't really been anybody that was doing uh, marketing for them for, for a couple of years. And so when I was, what I was tasked to do is, is to sort of build out those different acquisition channels, um, knowing that going forward, we were actually going to be launching a, a, an entirely new product. So that sort of uh, the acquisition channels would need to be sort of set up, but also be able to pivot into this, this new approach uh, with the new product. Um, they come from a ton of different places, uh, but really the, the three biggest ones are organic search, uh, for us, that's really, really high. It's taken a lot on on me and others in the organization to really focus on search engine optimization. We run ads, of course. Uh, we we have some Google AdWords out there. Uh, we've run social media ads before. They're not a huge conversion for us, though. Mm -hmm. uh, so we sort of pivoted away from that. Um, and so, but also just referrals from other websites, uh, backlinking and product listings um, have also been really, really crucial for us, as well as uh, something that they we really hadn't done quite a lot of, which was public relations strategy, uh, getting press written about us, getting out into the community and and partnering with things through uh, with other organizations, nonprofits uh, to use what we have to do uh, a lot better in the world around us. And so that's really how people have sort of uh, come in to know who we are. Uh, and we've built a, a great awareness around it. And um, it's it's interesting for me coming from a very small town in South Alabama to then have to build out a marketing and a go to market strategy and a plan for the entire world. Um, and but it's been a ton of fun. So, but yeah, people normally find us through through ads and then also organic search as well. How do you think about the website? Like, what role does the website play in their journey? Yeah, I'm actually very proud of our website. We just finished a, a complete rebuild. Um, uh, not too long ago, I want to say about a month and a half ago, maybe two months now, time is flying in, in 2023. Um, it, I think it's really beautiful and, and like very just great now. And it serves the purpose that our website should. Um, within the first year of my employment with Juice, one of the things that I even said coming into my interviews was, I can already see a problem with the website and that is that you're, there's a modesty issue. And I famously said in one of my interviews with our CEO, I said, modesty has no place in marketing. And it's something that I just sincerely believe in. Uh, and so we were doing a, a lot of, of, we were doing a lot on the website of just throwing and throwing information at people. And it was overwhelming people. People didn't know where to click. People didn't know where to go. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't like going to a website where there's simply just a lot of what I like to call site junk. Mm -hmm. Like you don't need to 
I, I like things kind of given to me in courses. There's an appetizer, there's an entree, there's a dessert, and then there's a drink after. Um, and so I don't want like a smorgasbord buffet of information in front of me where I don't know where to go. And so that was something that we really needed to do uh, a look at. And so what our website really is now is it is that initial, it, it really helps us in that initial stage of educating people that come to the website, what do we do, but also what impact we're having on our customers. You can tell people all day long that you create this, but if you can't show them how it's impacting them in their bottom line, at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to convert that person. And so that was something that was really, really important to me during our website uh, build out was to uh, make sure that it was playing that initial role, but also leading people through uh, specific calls to actions to convert them over into uh, into a, a demo with part of our sales team or in our internal team, um, or to just simply get them on a call and see, you know, if they were just a fit or if they had any questions, or sometimes people just want to sign up for our free 14 day trial and they get in there and they're very confused, but, yeah. um, you know, so that, that really is the, the role that our website is playing now, um, currently. Cool. Um, we chatted a bit about what you guys are doing. We chatted about the website and growth of it. I would like to learn more about yourself, right? You know, yeah. in, a, in a sort of in a usual daily business, if something like this exists, even right, because I'm sure there's tons of stuff going on. Like, what would be sort of you know the types of projects you would be involved with? This? What are like key initiatives you you know you're, you're running? Yeah. So uh, I am what we call a team of one uh, at Juice. I am the sole person in marketing and public relations. Um, I do have some help from others in the organization as well. Um, for me, it really is, uh, I am somebody who growing up hated math. So I don't know how I ended up in one, working for a data analytics company. Uh, it's part of the reason why I chose to go into public relations in college, because I wanted to be as far away from the math department as possible. Um, but I am constantly looking at numbers, strategizing in my head. Um, strategic partnerships are a really big thing that I'm working on right now. It's a key initiative for us. Uh, we actually just had an amazing uh, strategic partnership with the K through 12 school shooting database here in the United States uh, to work with them on presenting the data surrounding school shootings in America from 1970 to current. Mm -hmm. um, and we launched that on the fifth anniversary of the uh, Parkland, Florida, uh, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas uh, tragedy. And so things like that is a really big key initiative for me, as well as creating content uh, to disseminate digitally. So that's across our YouTube channel, creating long and uh, short, uh, long and short form blog content, social media posts, engaging with people on social media. Uh, if, if you see anything coming out from Juice Analytics, almost 99.9% .9 of the time it's me. Um, so there's a lot of different things uh, that, that we're working on, but uh, really talking to clients and, and, and customers and getting to know them a little bit better and learning how we've impacted them is a big part of uh, a key initiative for us. So we continue to move forward. It's something that I really want to improve upon on our website, putting together case studies and putting together customer testimonials. So um, that's what a, a typical day for me really looks different dependent upon the day. Um, but those are some of the biggest key initiatives that we have that we're moving forward with as we finish up here, uh, at the end of the month with Q1. Very cool. Let's get to uh, some rapid fire questions as we're wrapping it up for the day. Are you ready for those? I am so ready. What is the last book that you read? Oh goodness. Uh, the last book that I read, I read a book called The Border by Don Winslow. I'm, I'm a big mystery suspense thriller uh and it was about uh border patrol agents and drug mules and it was very interesting it was captivating highly recommend very good very good what is the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment oh um single thing we're focused on the most i would say that we are focused really heavily on improving data literacy in the united states and around the world it's something that's very important to us very good. If there would be no boundaries in technology, you would have a magic wand and you could change, you know, everything that you would want it for your role in marketing, what would that be? I don't know that I would change marketing. I would say I would change my uh, budget. I'd like a lot more money a month to be working with. Uh, technology wise, yeah, no, I, I we're good on that front, but uh, uh, we I, we really have incredible tools that are that are really great. But I I would always I. I'd, I'd like a little bit more money a month. So for our marketing and advertising budget. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very last question. 
if today would be your very first day joining the company, what's the one advice you would give yourself for that journey? Oh, give yourself some grace and give yourself some time. Uh, I came from a very different background. Uh, um, the bulk of my career had not been in the tech industry before in this way. Um, and like I mentioned, I'm not somebody that loved numbers either. So coming in and working for a data analytics and a data storytelling tool uh, in a company was very, there was a steep learning curve for me. And I'm a person that's very competitive. I have been since I was a kid. I'm very hard on myself. I'm my own worst critic. And so give yourself some grace and give yourself some time to learn the ins and outs of the industry. And don't forget to make sure you have a lot of iced coffee in your fridge because you're going to be working a lot of long days. <laughs> very, very cool. Patrick, I really appreciate you joining us today uh, for the Pathfinder Presents uh, podcast. Um, I um, want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed about juice analytics, what's the one thing people should remember? Yeah, that we are there to help you with uh, presenting data in an all new way. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to get on a demo call with you. Love to show you the product. Um, you can either bring your data uh, and we'll start building something out right, right there with you. Uh, or you can just simply get on a call and see if it's a great fit for us. So head over to juiceanalytics.com. Sign up for a time to meet with one of uh, the members of our team. We are so excited to get to help you present data differently. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Pathmonk Presents. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.